Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, we're out in Waddlesville today. Now you may remember that about six weeks ago, we built this outdoor quail aviary. It's a hoop coop up on a platform with a solid floor. And we decided that we're gonna start trying to raise quail outdoors. You guys, it has been going so well. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm really contemplating getting rid of my breeders that are in the barn up in raised up cages and just only having quail in this configuration. Now, I'm probably not gonna do that until after this winter because I do wanna make sure that this all goes well over winter. But if it continues to go as well as it's going so far, I'm super happy with raising them in this environment. So recently, Kevin and I have been thinking about what is the best way to prepare these quail and this hoop coop for winter for them. The other hoop coops that we have, we do modify their coop so that it stays warmer in there. Uh, we have noticed that the quail have stopped laying or they pretty much have stopped laying and a lot of that may be due to to light. Right. You know, the days are getting shorter. Uh, most birds, most poultry, their laying frequency is really determined by the length of the day and daylight. So right. not only are the days getting shorter, uh, but they're also in these hoop coops that are covered with a dark, you know, plastic dark tarp. So we've decided on a method that we can change up this hoop coop a little bit for them to hopefully increase the amount of light that they get every day. Now, one thing that I had talked about when we first built this hoop coop is that I was concerned about how often I was going to have to clean it because they're just on a solid floor with wood shavings. And, you know, when you're raising quail like in, in cages up off the ground with pans or whatever, those pans get dirty really, really fast. And I was concerned that, I mean, if I had to change this bedding every week or even every two weeks, First of all, that was gonna get expensive and it was gonna be very time consuming. You guys, I'm happy to say that we're gonna change the bedding in this today, but this is the first time in six weeks that we've had to change the bedding. It has stayed nice and dry. Uh, I think because the quail are always scratching around in it, the poop and everything else dries really fast. Um, no, nobody's got like poop on their feet. It's, I mean, it's just a completely different environment than it is when the poop lands in trays. And then, I mean, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm just so happy with the way that this is going. But it has been six weeks. So today we are going to uh, replace this. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is that over the last six weeks, you know, because this front is completely open, uh, when it does rain, sometimes the first maybe, you know, six to eight inches of bedding will get wet inside of this hoop coop. Uh, when I come out in the morning after a rain, I'll try to kind of fluff it up a little bit, but the quail also fluff it up a ton. And really by the next day, everything is dried out again, which has made it, there's like no smell. Um, again, if you've raised quail in cages up off the ground with pans, you know that quail can smell pretty bad. There's been no smell in these cages at all. It's just been, I, I don't know, so much better than I thought it was going to be. So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to actually catch all of the quail. We're going to put them in some containers, in some cages, and we're going to move them over into the shade so we can work on this. So we're going to catch all of the quail, then we're going to empty everything out of here, replace the bedding, and then get ready to start replacing this tarp with something a little different. Right now it's all falling apart Right now you don't know where to start Right now. All right, we caught everybody. That was a little bit of a rodeo, but they're all caught. Uh, we have 28 quail here, so we have 10, 10, and 8. So uh, they'll be nice and fine in here. This is inside the duck house. We put them in here so they're in the shade while we work over there. Yeah. 
that we have all the old bedding out of here, you can see that the plywood itself looks like it's doing really well. There's a little spot back here where I had a garbage can and it looks like that's staying wet. I mean, it's by far, it's not doing anything to the plywood, but I am going to not have those garbage cans in here this time so there's less chance of that stuff staying wet. But this is outdoor rated plywood and ground contact plywood, so I think we'll be good. All right, well, everything is set back up in there. They have a nice, clean home. But before we put the quail back in, there's a couple other things we still need to do because otherwise, when we take this tarp, the old tarp off, the quail might escape. So I went on Amazon and I bought this clear tarp. It's a reinforced, heavy-duty tarp. It's clear, um, and this should give them a lot of extra sunshine in there over the winter. Now, we won't use this, we won't leave this on year round. This will be for winter only. And then in the spring, we'll put this dark tarp back on because in the summer, it's gonna get too hot if they have this clear tarp during the summer. Now, my plan when it gets really cold in the winter is to also board up these sides, you know, the front and the back. I might make something that I can hinge and kind of give them some ventilation when they need it. I'm still thinking about all of that. What I know is for now, for this time of year, it's still pretty warm during the day, so we can't have this completely closed up, but we do want them to start getting more light. So we've got this clear tarp to put on. That's the next step in the project. Now, when we put the tarps on these hoop coops, all we do is use screws and washers in all of the grommets along the bottoms. We don't do anything along the front and the back. They seem to hold on nice and tight. So we're gonna get this old tarp off now. This, remember, this old tarp's only about six weeks old, so uh, it's not like it's not usable. We're just going to fold it up and save it for spring so we can put it back on. And of course, we always pick the windiest day to do these types of projects with tarps and stuff. Just the way it works out. Careful, you know where it's... What? All right. Well, that's one way to get it off. <laughs> Let the wind do it for you. You want to try to come? Okay. There's a low. Right. Okay, this is good. So this is the, this is the, this is the perfect size here. We just need to go like up and over somehow. All right, we got a little lull. Let's yeah, let's go. Uh. I'm gonna. You're snagged, I think. <sighs> Nope. I'm gonna run this over this does side. Not look long enough. I'm gonna run over here. Does it? Uh, I got about seven inches. I need more. Yeah. Yeah, this is nowhere near long enough. Luckily, because we have the metal. We can probably work something out. All right, we've got our tarp over. We have a little bit of a problem, but we already thought up a way to fix it. 
So our tarp is a little bit too short. I bought this tarp because online, it didn't say that the finished size was smaller than 12 by 16. It says it's a 12 by 16 tarp. Sometimes when they put this hem in, that deducts from the 16. And this one didn't say that, so I thought the finished size was gonna be 12 by 16, but it's not. It ends up being like 12 by like 15 and a half. So we're about six inches short. It's not a big deal because we have these metal sides on the hoop coop here. So even if we're short, it's not like anything could get in there. It just means that we can't attach this side of our tarp to the wood. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some screws and some paracord and kind of weave it to attach this side. It's getting really windy out, so we need to kind of hurry with this, but we're gonna try to get it done before any more big gusts. All right, the tarp is on. We figured out how to put it here down at the bottom. I think it's gonna be plenty secure. We put our wind straps back over the top. Let's go inside so you can see how much brighter it is inside of here now. You can see, I mean, this is gonna give them so much more light during the day. It's exactly the way that I wanted it for them. I think for over winter, this is gonna be perfect. They're gonna get plenty of light. Once I, you know, once it gets really cold and I kind of board up the ends, I think it'll even hold some heat in, so I think it'll be warmer for them. So this is great. There is one last thing that I wanna do though, um, and that is because the days are getting shorter in order for quail to keep laying eggs all winter long, they really need between 12 and 14 hours of light per day. So this is gonna give them more light earlier in the day and all day long, but once it gets dark, it's still gonna be dark. So I did buy a solar light to put in here as well. We're gonna quick hook that up, and then I think this project will be done. So this is the light that I bought now. I'm not recommending this light because to be honest, I haven't even tried it out yet. Um, this is just the one that I found on Amazon that I think will do what I need it to do. So basically we're gonna hang this in the middle and then this has a timer on it. Now it's not like a timer like you have for regular lights where you can set it and every day at a certain time it will come on and then go off. I mean. Instead, what it is, is basically you can set a timer that once you turn it on, it'll go off in a certain amount of time. So this solar panel will mount outside. I'll have it facing south. And then there's a remote control. So every evening, I'm going to have to come out and actually turn it on. And then you can see there's a two, four, or six hour setting. So I'll have to set it. I'll probably do the four hour setting. And then it'll go off four hours later. It's going to be kind of a pain, but you guys, I searched everywhere online and I could not find one. Now, if you guys know of one, let me know, but I could not find a solar powered light that has a timer that will come on and off at the same time every day. This is the best solution that I could come up with. So hopefully it'll work and hopefully I'll be around every day to turn it on when I need to turn, or, turn it on. So this is not gonna be a fancy installation because there's really not much to it. The uh, solar panel disconnects from the light. So we're going to, I'm gonna try to hang it about where I think the middle is. I'm just gonna hang it from a zip tie. We'll just run our wire up like that. And we'll go mount our solar panel outside here. It says that this thing should be able to stay on all night if you want it to now because of what we're using it for. I, it doesn't, we don't need it to stay on all night. I need it to stay on for just a few hours. 
But it says that if it gets six hours of sunlight during the day, it'll stay on all night, which isn't too bad. I think it was only about $30. So if it really works that well, that'd be pretty good. So I'm going to put this mounting bracket up here and then we'll just hang the solar panel on there. Give you a long enough cord here. I probably could have mounted this on the roof of the house. One thing I will tell you if you decide to look for a light like this is that some of them that I saw online only work after dark. So make sure that if you do look for one, you get one that actually says it can work during the daytime. And I say that not because I want this on during the day, but um, what I read on some of the reviews is that if it doesn't work during the day, then it won't come on until it's like pitch black outside. And for the quail, I need it to come on as it starts to get dark out. So um, we're going to want this to be able to have the daytime mode so that while it's, you know, dusk time, we can turn it on. It's all hooked up. Obviously, it's not going to do much during the day, but it does. You can see that it does come on, so that's good. So I'll be anxious to try it out this evening and see if it's bright enough. If it's not, I might need to do two of them in here, but I think this will probably be bright enough. I tried it in the house last night, like in the bathroom with the lights off, and it was pretty, pretty bright, so I think it'll be okay. All right, we're going to shut it off for now and let it charge up good in the sun today. So this project is about done, except for one major thing, and that is that we need to bring the quail back in. So let's go get the quail, bring them back in here, and see how they like their new setup. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. Even with a little problem there with the tarp being short, it still ended up going on just fine. And these are gonna be some great improvements for the quail. The hoop coop actually looks bigger. Right. It looks more open, which is actually fantastic. The quail are loving it so far, and we really hope that this helps them continue to lay for a long time yet. And I think the addition of the solar light in there is gonna help us hopefully get back into egg production here real soon. I'm always willing to try new things. And for a long time, I was kind of scared to try raising quail in this way, thinking that it would just be a lot of mess and a lot of extra work. And it actually ended up being exactly the opposite. I think the quail are much happier. I'm much happier. I feel better about the way that I'm raising them. And I think all in all, this is a win-win. You guys, if you're enjoying our videos, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And remember, the best way to help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.